Hi. At this point, you should open the spreadsheet that is labeled Valladolid PV Week 3A. This is a small template using the data from the Valladolid case. At this point, we're assuming that the cash flows have been identified and are given to us in what you can see on the screen as row 28. Uh, that should be row 3 in your spreadsheet. So those are the net cash flow vectors. We'll be using this example as we build uh, the other skills towards capital budgeting and we'll add in other complexities as we go. But for now, let's assume that that work has been done and we have a net cash flow vector. Now this is in local currency, which is all we're going to look at right now. Uh, you can see some of the assumptions that are built into, into this model. Uh, I've got a, it's a 10-year projection. I can't change that. That's built in and hard-coded in the spreadsheet. Um, normal projections for capital budgeting go out 5 to 10 years. I have assumptions on the Colombian tax rate and the U.S. tax rate, and then I have several inflation assumptions. Uh, you can see I started with revenue inflation of 2.5%. This uh, is in recognition that inflation is not really a homogeneous concept. It affects different commodities in the economy differently, and therefore uh, we really should take that into account when we're projecting. The, uh, the next item down is labor cost inflation, which I have set at 3%, and then other cost inflation also at 3%. And then I get to unit sales growth, that's 0.5%, uh, and then the next item down is the exchange rate, which we're not going to deal with right now, and, um, and a depreciation, expected depreciation of the currency, which we're not going to deal with right now. And then lastly, I have the weighted average cost of capital, and it's given here as 7.6%. So your first task is to go through and calculate the NPV, the uh, IRR. The most important one is the NPV. MIRR and IRR are still commonly used. PVI is called a present value index. It's very similar to the NPV in the sense that NPV is equal to the present value of the future cash flows minus the initial investment, whereas the PVI is the present value of the future cash flows divided by the initial investment. And so it's a benefit cost ratio. And in order for the NPV to be positive, the PVI must be greater than 1. So you can see in this case, both the NPV is negative and the PVI is less than 1. The reason that 1 is the critical value for the PVI is because if the present value of the future cash flows are greater than the costs, then that ratio is going to be greater than 1. So the higher that is, the better. It's like a benefit cost ratio that economists use a lot. Uh, and so it has that advantage, but it's really not giving us much information that the NPV by itself doesn't already give. And the NPV is in dollar figure, and therefore it's giving us the correct scale of the answer. Payback is not covered in your textbook, neither is discounted payback. Payback is simply a measure of time as to how long it takes to recover the initial investment. The um, discounted payback does the exact same thing, but it does it in present value terms of the future cash flows. So discounted payback is always longer than payback as long as the discount rate is positive. So you don't need to calculate PVI payback or discounted payback. Modified internal rate of return is also not covered in your book. I might put that up as an extra in case you're interested at some point. The IRR is just the internal rate of return of the cash flows and the NPV. So these two right here, I'm interested in you calculating. So the first thing you should do, both on your calculator and on the spreadsheet, is calculate the NPV and the IRR of these cash flows to confirm that you get these answers.